Hi guys, I'm Rod and welcome to my how to build video where I show you how to build this Woodsmith edge sander. If this is your first time seeing this machine and you're not familiar with all the cool things it can do, you might want to watch the first video in this series. You can watch that here. Then you can come back and watch this one. I built this machine right out of the pages of Woodsmith Magazine, volume 40, issue number 240. Now, I made my own version of this machine, but if you want to see the original Woodsmith plans, I will put a link for it in the description box below. You can go check it out. A little warning, this video is meant to be a help and a companion to the Woodsmith plans. Also, it's going to go by really fast, so feel free to pause, rewind, and play liberally throughout the whole thing. Oh, and whenever my plans and modifications differ from the Woodsmith plans, I'll let you know. Alright, let's get started. For this project, you're going to need two full sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood. You want to cut the first one in half and you want to cut the second one sort of in half. From these four pieces, you can cut out all the parts that you are going to need. Oh yeah, you're also going to need some extra material for your table spacer and your platen. And those are half inch and quarter inch MDF. And if you're going to build a drum sanding table, you're going to need a little more three quarter inch plywood. There are six major components to this machine. Let me quickly walk you through them. The machine stand is the central component where you're going to build the rest of the components on top of. The box spring is responsible for tensioning and tracking the belt. The rollers, of course, is where the belt is going to track. And the work table. This is where all of your woodworking magic happens. The motor mount is the component that powers your machine. And lastly, the dust shroud, which will save your lungs from breathing tons of debris. Okay, you're gonna wanna build your machine stand first. The machine stand is easy to build. First, you make an inner frame. Then, you screw the back panel and the front panel onto that frame. Then you screw the base onto the bottom of that. And lastly, you add the molding. So let's begin with the base, this guy. After cutting out the two pieces for the base a tiny bit oversized, apply tons of glue, laminate them together, clamp them with screws, and set it aside for now. Next, we make the inner frame for the machine stand. You are going to need seven pieces for this. Here they are. The first thing you want to do is to take these pieces and glue them together. After that, you take the short pillar, this guy, and you want to drill a 7 16 inch hole right in the middle at the very top of the board. This hole is going to be used for tensioning the sanding belt. Now, you just screw it all together. And you want to make sure that all the sides are nice and flush. Now it's time to screw on the rear panel and the front panel. But before you do that, drill out these four holes and recesses to the insides of the panel. The holes on the back of the panel hold up your dust hood, and the holes in the front hold up your work table. Next, use some epoxy to install the T-nuts. Make sure that all your T-nuts sit below the surface. Now, you screw it all together. Now it's time to install your base to your machine stand. So just flip it upside down and screw it onto the bottom. Next, we want to install the molding that wraps around the bottom of the machine stand. The molding not only adds a decorative feature to the machine, it also helps to solidify and lock the stand into the base. After cutting out all the parts for the moldings, go to your table saw and tilt the blade to 45 degrees. You're going to want to cut out this beveled profile along the long edges of your workpiece. So grab your molding and get to it. It should look something like this. After that, it's time to make compound miter cuts, which makes the moldings join at the corners here. We are making these cuts at the table saw. You want to cut your workpiece by tilting it away from the blade 45 degrees. 
But hang on a second, you also have to tilt your workpiece up 45 degrees as well. The safe way to do this is by attaching this simple jig to your miter gauge. This jig holds your workpiece at exactly the right angle so your cuts come out perfect. Don't worry, it's simple to make. After making your first cut, take your workpiece to the machine stand, measure carefully, and mark for your second cut. To make your second miter cut, just switch your jig to the left miter slot, turning it away from the blade 45 degrees. Perfect. Now all that's left is to glue it up and set it in place with a pin nailer. We're finished with the machine stand, it's time to move on to the rollers. You're going to make two rollers, and you need eight pieces of three quarter inch plywood to make them up. Each roller needs to be six inches tall. If your plywood is a little under three quarter inches, you'll need to add an extra layer to make it up. Now both rollers are going to have a 5 8 inch rod going through them, so you will need to drill out a 5 8 inch hole in every layer before gluing up the rollers. In addition to that, the idle roller is going to have bearings in the top and bottom layer, so you'll need to drill out a forced neurisis for them as well. The drive roller is going to have a 3 16 inch pin going through the top and bottom layer to lock the roller in place. So move your table saw fence to 2 and 3 8 and make a shallow cut in your top and bottom layer and make sure to flip your piece over, running it through the cut a second time to create the appropriate sized groove. Now all you need to do is glue up your rollers. I used the 5 8 rod to line up all the layers. Once they were clamped in place, I just removed the rod and I wiped off the glue. Your rollers should look something like this. Now we're ready to turn your square rollers into cylinders. First, we'll remove the bulk of the waste by cutting off the corners to the glued up blanks. So tilt your table saw blade 45 degrees and get to it. Now that the bulk of the material has been removed, we're ready to turn these using the router table and this simple to make roller jig. This jig will hold the roller for you, allowing you to feed and turn the rollers into the router bit safely. And yes, it's fast and simple to make. We'll be using a core box bit to slowly turn the blanks at the router table. A half inch or a one inch core box bit will do. Feed the roller into the router bit nice and slow. Be patient, take your time. Turn the blank as naturally as you see fit. The router bit will give you feedback during the whole process. And before you know it, you'll have a round blank. When you're done, you're ready to put the 1 16th of an inch taper on each end of the blank. First thing you do is raise the router bit 1 16th of an inch. Second, you take a 1 16th of an inch shim and tape it underneath the back of your roller jig so that it's lifted up 1 16th of an inch. With the shim in place, the router bit will take a big bite out of the front end of your roller, creating the taper. And as you keep moving the roller into the bit, it will remove less and less material until it quits cutting halfway through the blank. When you're done, simply remove the shim and tape it underneath the other side of the jig and run it through the router again to create the taper on the opposite side of the roller. The woodsmith plans call for you to create a taper on both rollers, but if you're building the drum sanding table, you want to put a taper on the idle roller only and leave the drive roller uniform. Alright, the rollers are done. Let's move on to the box spring. 
The box spring is built exactly like a box, with a few extra components added on. There is a back to the box, there are sides, there's a front, a bottom, a top. And then of course there's the extra components, which are the track and assembly, the roller and shaft, the tensioning assembly, and finally the spring assembly in the back. And of course there is another side to the box. And all of this is just assembled together with screws. So let's get started. Start by cutting out all of your pieces according to the plans. Then you want to glue up these three components. After that's done, grab one of your inner caps and take it to the drill press. You're going to want to drill out three evenly spaced holes right in the middle of your inner cap. Now grab your outer cap and drill out three quarter inch holes for your dowels. The holes in your outer cap and your inner cap should line up with each other. So now grab your 3 quarter inch dowels and glue them into your outer cap. When you're done, they should look something like this. Now you can insert your springs. Good! Let's move on to the tension cap. We want to drill the hole that makes tensioning the sanding belt possible. This hole. So take your tension cap to the drill press and make a hole all the way through the length of the piece. Before drilling out this hole, you probably want to make sure that your drill press can drill nice and square. Good! Now let's make the holes responsible for holding the idle roller in place. These holes. So take the top and bottom of your box over to the drill press. The top of your box receives a 1 inch hole, while the bottom of the box gets a 5 8 hole. Oh, and it's important you put these holes in the right place. So now we can move on to the tracking block. We need to make a stopped hole underneath this tracking block that receives the rod coming from the roller. So start by placing the top of your box over your tracking block and use a one inch Forstner bit to transfer the hole location onto your block. Now take it to the drill press and create your stopped hole. Now we can make the oversized holes for the screws that will allow you to make fine adjustments to your tracking block. Make them toward the back of your block so that you have enough room for the rounded profile. Now make one more hole for your threaded rod, right in the middle at the top of the block. And while you're at it, you might as well make the hole for your stationary block as well, since it will receive the same threaded rod. Okay, it's time to start putting this whole thing together. Grab your tension cap and the bottom of your box, put them together with their front edges flush, and just screw them together. Now grab your tracking block and the top of your box. Clamp the block to the top so that the front edges are flush. Use a 516 drill bit to transfer the hole locations from your tracking block to your top. Now make the necessary pilot holes and you're ready to screw them together. You're going to need washers and panhead wood screws. Just screw them down with the washers in place. You should be able to move your tracking block like this and then just tighten them slightly. For goodness sake, don't use an impact driver. Now let's create this rounded profile. Start by taking your top and your bottom assemblies and taping them together. Draw a round profile that's pleasing to your eye, then cut it out at the bandsaw. With a rasp, sandpaper, and a little elbow grease, you can make this look really good. Take your stationary block to your top assembly. We need to insert this threaded rod into both your stationary block and the tracking block. We'll be using some epoxy for this. Place some epoxy into the hole of the stationary block only. Then thread your knurled knob and your washer onto your threaded rod and insert it all into your track and assembly. Now you can just screw it down. And finally, you can put the whole thing together with screws. Grab your spring assembly and just insert it loosely into the back of the box. Now we need to extend the hole in our short pillar to fit our tensioning assembly. After that, fill the hole with a bunch of epoxy, slide your box spring into the machine stand, and add your threaded rod before the epoxy dries. Finish it up with your washer and your knurled knob. And when the epoxy dries, just cut your rod to size.
We're done with the box spring, let's move on to the motor mount. I designed the motor mount a little differently to accommodate for the drum sanding table. You can build the ones in the woodsmith plans, or if you want the drum sanding table, you can build mine. The motor plate is made from two layers of plywood with a rabbit on each side. There are two side plates fitted into the rabbits with glue, screws, and dowels for strength. Two adjustment knobs, the on-off switch, and of course, the motor. The motor is connected to the rest of the assembly with a shaft coupling. And then to finish up comes the shaft, the roller, the top cap, and the bearing cap. So let's begin. After cutting out all your parts, the first thing you want to do is glue the motor plates together. Make your adjustment buttons from scrap in your shop and just cut them out with a hole saw. Take your bearing cap and draw a circle three and a half inches in diameter. Take it to your drill press and drill out a recess for your bearing. After that, drill out the through hole for your shaft. Now clamp your bearing cap to your table and use a circle cutter at the drill press to cut out your circle. Start cutting about a quarter inch away from your line and make sure to secure your off cut and tape up your circle cut out underneath before you start. Now just use a round over bit and a flush trim bit at the router table to clean it up. Lastly, add some epoxy to your forced neurisis and secure your bearing. Now grab your top cap and draw another rounded profile on one end. Cut it out at the bandsaw. With a little sandpaper afterwards, you can make it look nice. Now, just take it to your drill press and drill out your hole for your roller shaft. Let's work on your mounting plate. Take your plate to your router table and route two rabbits on both edges of your plate. Make them three quarter inches or the real width of your plywood because we're going to mount your side plates like this. Wait a minute, freeze. Insert one quarter inch T-nets near the bottom of your mounting plate, just kissing the rabbits on the edges. More on this later. And you might as well prep your plate to mount your motor, screw to the machine stand, and mount your side plates. Okay, unfreeze. Now grab your top cap, bearing cap, and rod. Attach your bearing cap to the top cap by inserting the rod into both of them. With your rod in place for alignment, screw down your bearing cap. Prepare to install your mounting plate by turning the machine on its side. Bring the plate to the machine and use a reliable square to square up the plate to the stand. Screw down your mount and install your bolts for the motor plate. Mount your motor, washers, and nuts. Finger tighten only. Now you can install your shaft coupling and tighten it up before turning the machine right side up again. Let's install the rest of the assembly. Grab your top cap, insert your shaft, insert your roller, and bring it to your machine. We need to align the motor, the top cap, and the machine stand to each other. So after dropping and tightening the shaft onto the coupling, move your motor along its slotted holes left and right until the edge of the top cap comes flush with the machine stand. Once in place, tighten the motor down. And while you're here, you might as well establish the permanent screw locations of the top cap to the machine stand. And now we're ready to mark out our permanent pin locations for our drive roller. The first thing we need to do is make sure that our rollers are on the same plane. If you've built everything to spec, the distance between the drive roller and the top cap needs to be 15 16 of an inch. So measure carefully and mark the pin locations on the roller shaft. Now remove the shaft from the coupling and the roller and drill out your holes for your pins. You want to make sure that your holes line up with your roller, so insert the shaft and take a look. Very nice. Now use some epoxy to permanently install your pins. Great! Now just reinstall your shaft and your top cap. Let's work on your side plates. Take your plates to your drill press and make your holes for your dowels and your buttons.
Install your side plates by adding glue to the rabbets of the mounting plate and the side plates. Clamp together and screw in place. To attach your adjustment buttons, fill in the center hole with a dowel and make another hole slightly off center for your machine screw. Now just install with machine screws, washers, and nuts. Extend the holes for your dowels so that the total depth of the hole equals two inches. Then just add glue and hammer in your dowels. Here you can see that I installed my mounting plate off center of the motor in the machine stand. And that's mostly because of this thing. I had to push my mounting plate over so that I had enough room to drop in my drum sanding table later. Now you can install your on and off switch, wire everything up, plug it in, and turn it on. Very nice, it purrs like a kitten. The motor mount is done, now we can move on to the work table. We need to add a couple of things to the machine stand in order for our work table to work properly. The first thing we need to add is the platen, which needs to be laminated. Then we add a spacer below it, which helps to put room between the platen and the work table. And then we screw down the adjustment plate, which is responsible for helping adjust the height of the work table. On top of that comes the nut block, which holds the threaded rod that actually pushes the table up and down. On the adjustment plate, we're going to install these little shims that are going to guide the work table as it moves up and down. Then of course comes the work table itself, which consists of a table back. These little slots that you see here are made to fit over the shims that we saw earlier. The larger slots fit our star knobs. Then we attach our braces that help hold up our table. The table itself is made from two layers of plywood with a slot in the middle for a miter track. And of course, the whole thing is laminated. And this little piece here just helps to guide the threaded rod from the adjustment plate. The work table is then added to the machine stand by gently sliding it over the shims in the adjustment plate. And finally, the work table is secured firmly to the machine stand by these star knobs. After cutting out all the parts, the first thing we want to do is install the platen. So grab your platen and attach the laminate with contact cement. Now just attach the platen to the machine stand with screws right below the top cap. Next, attach the table spacer by simply jutting it up against the platen and screwing it down. And it's about here that I realized I forgot to make the clearance holes for the star knobs. Next, take your work table, glue it up, and attach the plastic laminate. Good, let's attach the miter track. With the router, create a groove in your work table right in the middle of your board. Then, drop some epoxy and install the miter track. With that done, let's work on your adjustment plate. Load a slot cutting bit into your router table. Cut the slot for your shims along both edges of your adjustment plate. Very nice. Let's do the same with the table back. Take it to the router table and route grooves for your shims on the two inside edges of your table back. Let's move on to the nut block. Before you start, you want to glue up all three layers of the block. Use your magic. Take it to your drill press and drill the recess for your T-nut and the through hole for your threaded rod. Now you can install your T-nut with a little bit of epoxy and some violence. Now grab your adjustment plate and install your nut block with a T-nut facing up, right in the middle, flush with the top of the board. Use about four two inch screws. Now you're ready to install your splines into your adjustment block with some epoxy. But before you do that, take your splines over to your table back and make sure that they can slide easily back and forth with just the right amount of friction. You may have to hand plane or sand them to get them to slide just right. 
Let's install the adjustment plate to the machine stand. But in order to do that, take your table back over to your drill press and make the four starter holes for your star knobs. After that, you can grab your adjustment plate and slide it into your table back. To help you install the adjustment plate correctly, clamp your support strip up against the bottom of the table spacer. For alignment, use the star knobs to secure the table back to the machine stand. Now that the adjustment plate is centered within the table back and the machine stand, just push the plate down against the support strip. Now, just screw it down. With the adjustment plate installed, we can finish the work table. Start by finishing up the slots in the table back. Next, grab your tabletop and flip it upside down. You're going to install the table back flush with the back edge of the table. I used glue and pocket holes to attach them together. Finish it up by attaching the braces the same way. Install them just outside of the inner slots for the splines. Now take it over to the machine stand and slide it over the splines. Finish up your upper guide by drilling this hole near the top of the workpiece. Next, install your threaded rod into your hand wheel, nice and tight, then install it into your nut block. Don't forget your upper guide. Thread your hand wheel as far up as it will go and screw in your upper guide. Go ahead, take it for a spin. Lastly, install your star knobs. Okay, our work table is done. Let's work on the dust hood. Now I built the dust shroud a little differently from the woodsmith plans in order to accommodate for the drum sanding table. If you want the drum sanding table, you can build this version. The dust hood is made from two pieces of plywood and so are the spacers. The spacers are screwed to the two pieces along the bottom and inside edges. Then the left and right pieces are attached together with hinges. These two holes on the outside are for the star knobs and these two recesses here are for the one inch magnets that help hold up the dust hood when using the drum sanding table. The dust shroud on the side and the corner braces are attached with glue and a pin nailer. And the recesses here are for magnets, 3 8 of an inch in size in order to attach and remove the shroud front. After cutting out all your parts, grab your right spacer and your right dust hood and screw the spacer onto your hood flush along the bottom and inside edge. After that, take it to your drill press and drill out the hole for your star knob. Grab the left spacer and the left dust hood and do the same. Screw the spacer onto the hood flush along the bottom and inside edge. Now take it to the drill press and drill out the hole for the star knob and drill out the recesses for the one inch magnets. Go ahead and insert your magnets. Now we're gonna take our left and right dust hoods and attach them together with these two hinges. Voila, the two are now one. Next, we attach our support strip to our machine stand with screws. After that, we drill out the recesses for our magnet washers. Go ahead, try it out. Bring your dust hood to the machine stand and let it catch on your magnets. Now just insert your rear star knobs. Very nice. Let's work on the dust shroud. Take your dust shroud and draw the hole for your dust port. Now take it to your drill press and use a circle cutter to cut out your hole. As always, secure both the cutout and the workpiece really well before cutting. Okay. 
drill the recesses necessary for your magnets. I'm using four 3 8 of an inch rare earth magnets along the inside edge of the dust shroud. Great, now just attach your dust port on the opposite side. You're ready to install your dust shroud. Grab a corner brace and bring it over to your machine. You're going to attach your corner brace with glue to the inside surface of your right dust hood flush against the outside edge. Now use some more glue to attach the dust shroud and finish it up with a pin nailer. Let's finish this up by grabbing your shroud front and taking it to the drill press. Make the recesses for the magnet washers. Make sure that their locations match with those of the side dust shroud. Now just install your washers with a little bit of epoxy. Attach the remaining corner brace with glue to the inside of the front dust shroud and finish it up with a pin nailer. Now just attach it to your machine. We are done with the edge sander. You can stop here or you can go on to build the drum sanding table. This part of the build is extra and you don't need to build it. But if you want to turn your edge sander into a drum sander too, just keep building. The drum sanding table is easy to build. The whole thing is made from five separate pieces of three quarter inch plywood. The table is made from two pieces that are glued together and the platforms are made from three other pieces. As you can tell, the front and the rear platforms are completely identical, except that the rear platform has this little arm that extends out. So you just gotta cut that one a little longer. The two inch hole locations for the adjustment buttons are also identical and in the same place. After cutting out all your parts, take your two pieces for your tabletop, glue them together, and glue on your plastic laminate on top with contact cement. Now just cut out the final shape of your drum sanding table at the bandsaw or with a jigsaw. Next, grab your platforms and place them on a flat surface. Just attach them together with screws, three on each side. To install your tabletop, just swing your dust hood away. Grab your platform and slide it into your mount. Now take your table and simply place it on top of your platform. Once your table is centered around the roller, just mark its location underneath. Attach your platform to your tabletop by simply lining up the platform to your lines and screwing it down. I did go a little overboard with the pocket holes here. I also installed four mending plates to the lower sections of the platforms, both in the back and in the front. Don't worry, this will make sense later. After that, grab your fine adjustment blocks and drill a starter hole with a number seven drill bit. Next, tap the blocks for a quarter inch 20 thread screw. Now, just insert your thumb screws and glue them in place. Make sure to glue them about a half inch or three quarter inches away from where your platforms land. They need to be close enough to push on the mending plates. To finish up, insert the fine adjustment star knobs on the mounting plate in the front and in the rear. Now all that there's left to do is to give it a great paint job. If you plan on taking on this project, I wish you the best of luck. And remember, you can find the plans by following the link in the description box below. I want to thank you so much for watching and enjoying my videos and projects. Till I see you again, thank you. Hasta luego.